Hello, Booktube. This is the eighth part of the fifth bookshelf of the fourth Big Wall bookcase. And this uh, is the last part of that bookcase, and then uh, we'll be able to move on to other, other types of things. Um, but this one has some of my, my favorite uh, subject matter. But we'll start off here. Um, Hammond Dennis, I'm a big fan of his uh, thrillers uh, from back in the day. And uh, this is a nonfiction book he did on the Conquistadors. This was, um, there you go, Fontana Collins, St. James Place, London, 1969. Oh, you can see it there. My bald head sticking above it. So it's an illustrated history, the stone work there, of uh, the conquistadors, what they saw, what they did, how they conquered. And uh, the implications of that and the civilizations they pretty much destroyed. I know pretty much about it that they did destroy. So. Conquistadors. So now I'm going to get into the story of two men, one American, one British. Um, immensely important story uh, that doesn't get enough play or at least enough of the type of play I, I, I personally think it deserves. And that's um, John Lloyd Stevens and Frederick Catherwood. And there, together they were responsible in a way for the birth of American archaeology. You can get back and forth on that. Thomas Jefferson um, had a lot to do with it and a lot of other things, but I mean you can make a case anyway uh, for the rediscovery of those lost cities in the Yucatan and, and a lot of what they they, they thought, and this was during the 1800s, um, they ended up being right about, um, to a degree. It was very brave, very incredible journeys. Um, and this, there, uh, John Lloyd Stevens was a, a really excellent travel writer and very famous in his day. And um, I, for the life of me, don't understand why his writings aren't all in the Library of America as part of our heritage. I mean, and if you find copies, they are worth reading. Even now, after a hundred and something years, or well over a hundred and something years. So anyway, here's a here's a version of Incidents of Travel in Central America, Chiapas, and Yucatan by John Lloyd Stevens. This is a new edition by Carl Ackerman with historic and modern photographs. We're going to see a theme here in a little bit. And this is a nice book, and, it, and this is good for what it does. Smithsonian Institution Press, Washington and London. And uh, the date is 1993. Very nice book. And uh, this is some of Catherwood's, uh, here's a copy of Catherwood's lithograph in the doorway of the Temple of the Magician in Ushma. Um, and then we have photographs of the landscape. Catherwood, as I think I previously mentioned, was lost on uh, a steamship that went down. I don't think we have any images of what he looked like. We have one or two of John Lloyd Stevens. John Lloyd Stevens was later president of the Pan American Railroad. Or, anyway, it's a very complicated story, but it always focuses on the Mayans. And both men had done a lot in the Near East and even travels to Russia and all this. And in their time, they were known as much for those. So a lot of these newer books tend to only focus, and that's where I think the mistake's made. And I'd love to see a big, big biography that covers the entire time span. 
and uh, the, the entire travels because they, they were going through the world at a fascinating time. But here we go. This is this is a Victor von Hagen who we saw in the last section. This is his search for the Maya, the story of Stevens and Catherwoods, and it's it's a really interesting book. Um, but like I say, it everything overdoes, I think, um, the Mayan section. And uh, understandable to a degree because it's important stuff. But it, at least in this, uh, Von Hagen is trying to cover the Egyptian journeys and all these sort of things. So you have the Grey Nile, Mr. Stevenson's tour, Arabia Petraea, um, and the meeting of the two men. So um, this book here is... Um, Saxon House, and it was uh, published in 1973, and it's a good read. It's a really excellent read. But you see, there's uh, the Yucatan, so we have that. And there's some of Catherwood's work. So this stuff, these images that Catherwood did, came out to a very, very surprised uh, public. At a time when a lot of the stuff was coming from Egypt, a lot of the stuff was of these lost and fabled cities and that whole idea. So here is Arabia Petraea. So anyway, very, very excellent book. And by the same same guy, um, uh, Victor Wolf von Hagen, this is John Lloyd Stevens and the Lost Cities of Central America and the Yucatan. It's called Maya Explorer. And again, the emphasis is on the Mayan trips. And that's, the Mayan trips are important. Um, this is Chronicle Books, San Francisco. And this uh, was originally seven, 1947, but this is a reprint of uh, 1975. So there's Mr. Von Hagen. He's, a, he's an archaeologist as well as a writer. So here's some more of the Catherwood images. And this is focused on, on the Mayan stuff. Here, you have a little one that's a little, one that's a little harder to find. And this is again by Von Hagen. So you can tell he's done a lot of this work. And this, uh, New York, Oxford University Press, it's 1950 with an introduction by Aldous Huxley. So, I mean, this is not unknown stuff. Um, Frederick Catherwood Architect by Victor Wolfgang von Hagen. So this is this focuses on Catherwood, and uh, I was very pleased to find this this volume. New York, uh, New York cover. And, and it's, a, it's a fascinating story. And we keep going. Um, this one is a newer. This is on the trail of the Maya Explorer, Tracing the Epic Journey of John Lloyd Stevens by uh, Steve Glassman. Again, with this focus on the Maya stuff, I'm not saying these are bad books. They're wonderful books. But um, I just think more needs to be done to integrate all the travels into one big biography. Um, this is 2003. Uh, University of Alabama Press, Tuscaloosa in London. Again, a wonderful book. Uh, let's see. Catherwood's illustration of Stella D with the altar, which we've seen before. So again, another really good story. Now we're going to do a couple of, you can get John Lloyd Stevens reprints of his works, his travel books. So um, let's just start with this one here. John Lloyd Stevens lives from 1805 to 1852. And he topped off an academic youth by exploring the world, eventually distinguishing himself in such endeavors as 
playing a primary role in building the Panama Railroad and producing the era's preeminent record of Mesoamerican culture. Incident of travel in Central America, Chiapas, and Yucatan. This, however, is incidents of travel in Greece, Turkey, Russia, and Poland. His wandering spirit mellowing his analytic eye, John Lloyd Stevens is the best kind of guide. Whether describing the riches, richness of the Seraglio in Turkey or the drama of a gambling hall in Russia, the congenial and charismatic style of his narrative, with its hearty doses of humor, is warming while enthusiastic account of treks, discoveries, and friends made utterly engages. Add to this Stevens' conscientious inclusion of historical, sociopolitical, anthropological, and sometimes mythological context, and incidents of travels in Greece, Ru Turkey, Russia, and Poland becomes the next thing to have to being there, but it actually would have been to having been there since this is a long time ago. Um, and this is Cosimo Classics. Okay, they have a section on um, um, travel and exploration, and and this is this is nicely done. They did it in two thousand seven. The original books from eighteen forty one. And Cosmo Classics is out in New York. So it's got this type of print. If that bothers you, this is probably going to bother you, but it doesn't bother me in the least. And it's a good story. So I like the chapter heading for chapter uh, 17. Moscow, a severe operation. The Kremlin, sepulchers of the czars. The Great Bell, the Great Gun, precious relics. I love how they used to do that. So that, that's uh, one of his travel books. And here's another one I ordered. Again, a Cosmo classic out of New York. But this is uh, categorized under Middle Eastern history. And this is Incidents of Travel in Egypt, Arabia Petraea, and the Holy Land. Um, perhaps the first modern travelogues still capture the imaginations of armchair uh, explorers. The mid-19th uh, century best-selling books of American diplomat and writer John Lloyd Stevens reads like the most inspired of novels. The poetic immediacy places the reader square in the saddle of adventure. In this classic 1837 work, which a critic like Edgar Allan Poe praised for its freshness of manner and vincing manliness of feeling, Stephen takes the reader an evocative journey through the Middle East, from a visit to the pyramids of Egypt to encounters with the enthusiastic... Uh, Enthusiastic locals and more. So it's a Cosmo Classic, New York, and they printed their copy in. Come on, guys. Here we at. Oh, 2010. So it's a little later than the other one. And um, this was first published in uh, 1837. The print on this is much better. And I, I don't know why the difference. So there's a couple of the travel logs there. And then here is the first of what I believe is a two volume set. Well, I know it's a two volume set. And I'd like to find the other volume. Here's the end papers. And this is Incident of uh, Travel in Central America, Chiapas, and Yucatan by John Lloyd Stevens, Esquire, Volume 1, illustrated by numerous engravings, edited with an introduction notes by Richard L. Predmore, New Brunswick, Rutgers University Press, 1949. And it has an image of John Lloyd Stevens there. So I'd like to find the other volume because for this book, it's just, these, are, these are very nice volumes. Um, so there's, we're getting into the Mayan stuff there. And so that was all John Lloyd Stevens and Frederick Catherwood. Now we're going to uh, something different. This is Howard S. Russell's Indian New England Before the Mayflower. This is University Press in New England, Hanover in London. And this was, uh, this was published in 1980 at Dartmouth. Great. Not too far from here. So history of New England Indians prior to the Mayflower. And then this White Devil, a true story of war, savagery, and vengeance in colonial America by Stephen Brumwell.
And this was, uh, let's see if we can get the right page, 2004, DeCapo Press, member of the Perseus Book Group. Um, a nice map showing the area, which most of it is right around here. And this is a story, uh, this was North America's first major conflict, known today as the French and Indian War. In that conflict, France and England, both allied with Native American tribes, fought each other in a series of bloody battles and terrifying raids. And no confrontation was more brutal and notorious than the massacre of the British garrison of Fort William Henry and the now upstate New York incident, memorably depicted in James Fenimore Cooper's The Last of the Mohicans. That atrocity calls for revenge, and the tough young Major Robert Rogers and his rangers were ordered into enemy territory to take it. That's quite a story. And then finishing off the last book of this fourth Big Wall bookcase is on the same subject, and it's uh, The French and Indian War, Deciding the Fate of North America, Walter R. Borneman. That is, uh, let's see, that is from 2006, HarperCollins Publishing out of New York. Let's see these, uh, are these maps very helpful? The maps are very helpful. Um, a good chronology. So, French and Indian War. So, that is it, finally, that big, big fourth uh, bookcase is done. Thank you, Booktube.